Hey guys, happy last week of school. I know you guys can push through and do it this week. We're really gonna try our best as your teachers to not ask a ton of you. Um, I know that it's been a really hard quarter to get through. Um, also, I just really can't leave this book undone and just say, you know what, we're not gonna finish this. So I'm gonna do my best to get through the book with you before the week is over. Um, but if we don't, know that I'm still going to post uh, finishing out the book because that's just who I am. I can't I can't start a book and not finish it. And I hope you feel the same way. Uh, the Outsiders is definitely worth reading all the way until the end. All right. And if you are someone that you know you're going to feel a little bit bored this summer and, and you want to read or talk about a text, I can make sure to get something in your hands. Um, so drop in the comments if you are interested in continuing to read over the summer and just to give yourself a 15 minute lesson each day because that's how long my videos normally are. Um, okay, so I, I, last week was crazy and I didn't put the right questions on. So basically all you did was read and take a little spark notes quiz. So I hope that was okay with y'all. Um, this week we are gonna read chapter nine on Monday and Tuesday chapter 10 on Wednesday and Thursday, and hopefully chapter 11 on Friday. Um, and, and I know everyone's gonna be in the comments like, I'm not in school. Again, I'm gonna post it either way. Um, if you wanna finish strong and finish the book with me, I love it. If you never wanna see The Outsiders again after this week, I understand. All right, but the end is good. It's really good. Okay, uh, so it's, you guys should open up day 15 first. Um, I had posted in the stream, we missed our vocab quiz last week and you know, every, everything count, every point counts, right? If you wanted to try to take it, see how you do. Um, I feel like the vocab isn't asking a lot from you guys. So try it out, see how you do. Um, we do have six words this week. The words are indignant, notion, testify, survey, apparently, and dodgedly. Um, the definitions are there on, on slide three for today. Okay, so when you're done your vocab quiz, if you want to take a second, pause the video right now and, and to look over the new words, that's cool. I hope that you are getting some time in over the summer to practice vocabulary words. I promise you for your high school placement tests, um, a lot of you are going to want to take like the SSAT to get into a good high school or a high school that you're choosing. Vocab is a huge part of it. Everyone always says uh, when they take that test that it's just, they give you a word and you have to define it. There's no clues, there's nothing to help you out. So the best thing you can do to prepare yourself uh, for high school is just start getting words in your head. Um, I know it sounds really corny and nerdy, but it's it's fun just to, to play for like five minutes a day. Easy strategy to get your vocab up. All right, talking too much. I obviously miss you guys, so I'm just gonna talk to my computer. <laughs> um, now that we've looked at some vocab, let's pull it back to our do now today. Um, this is a really important journal to think about because of kind of where we are right now in our lives. Um, it says, do you prefer to be in a group? Or why or why not? Um, this has to do with today's reading, but also, you know, restrictions are being lifted on you guys in your communities. I know Philly, we just had a few restaurants open over the weekend. Um, people are getting out a little bit more. Uh, and I really want you guys to think like, are you excited for that experience? Are you ready to be around a lot of people? Or are you gonna kind of miss being able to kind of be to yourself in your own space? Um, it definitely feels weird to be in more social groups. All right, so if you wanna pause here to write how you're feeling about groups or being alone, you can pause the video. Hey, welcome back. I bet you all of you didn't pause the video. That's funny. Um, okay, next guys, uh, there's only two more slides left. So I divided it that we're gonna read about four pages today and then um, hopefully uh, read until the end of the chapter on Tuesday. Okay, so I'm gonna read first uh, Monday's reading and then I'll go over the questions with you and then I'll put a different video up for Tuesday's class, okay? Um, also, before I start to read, if there's anyone that wants to you know, close out the year and 
FaceTime or Zoom or talk or hang out with me, I would love it. I didn't set something like that up this week because when we did it during spring break, we didn't have a ton of people uh, show up and it kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. But I know like five or six of you came pretty regularly. So if anyone's out there and, and you do want to hang out and celebrate the end of the year and just like talk and be weird, um, you know that I'll always give you a time for that. And I'm basically just going to be at school each day this week to try to see some graduate graduates, graduating people um, and just keep running my little food pantry that we're, we started at school. All right, so again, if you want to have some one-on-one -on -one time with me, y'all know I'm just a remind message away. Just send me a message. We can talk about how crazy this year was. And you know what? We'll all be back together again in the fall. And you know I'm just gonna be in your eighth grade classes bothering you all the time. All right, I'm getting distracted. This video is gonna be longer than 15 minutes because I keep talking. I hope y'all had a good weekend. Um, it's Sunday right now. I'm like cleaning my house and not doing anything fun. All right, all right, all right. Mitch, stay focused. Uh, chapter nine. Here we go. Uh, so this is on page 112 if you, if you click the link in the stream. It was almost 6.30 when I got home. The rumble was set for seven, so I was late for supper, supper as usual. I always come in late. I forget what time it is. Daria cooked dinner, baked chicken and potatoes and corn two chickens because all three of us eat like horses simile eat like horses okay uh, especially dairy but although i loved baked chicken i could hardly swallow any i swallowed five aspirins uh though in dairy and soda weren't looking i do that all the time because i can't sleep very well at night i do not recommend that because aspirin's not going to help you to sleep better at night why did he take that medicine Oh yeah, he's trying to, remember he told Tubit, he's like, oh, I'm fine to go to the fight. But he, he just got rescued from a burning church with his friend. So he probably should be in the hospital too. Um, so he took this aspirin so he can fake it to go to the fight. Um, all right. I do that all the time because I can't sleep very well at night. Derry thinks I just take one, but I usually take four. I figured five would keep me going through the rumble and maybe get rid of my headache. Then I turn to take a shower and change clothes. Me and Soda and Derry always get spruced up before a rumble, and besides, we wanted to show the socials that we weren't trash, that we were just as good as they were. It's kind of cute, sweet. They get dressed nicely before they fight. I don't really get it. Take pride in themselves, that's gotta be it, right? In being a greaser, the way they look, they love how they look. Uh, Soda, I called from the bathroom. When did you start shaving? <laughs> when I was 15, he yelled back. When did Derry? When he was 13. Why, are you figuring on growing a beard before the rumble? You're funny. We ought to send you to Reader's Digest. I hear they pay a lot for funny things. Soda laughed and went right back to playing poker with Steve in the living room. Derry had on a tight black t-shirt that showed every muscle in his chest, even the flat, hard muscles of his stomach. I'd hate to be the social that takes a crack at him, I thought as I put on a clean t-shirt and a fresh pair of jeans. I wished my t-shirt was tighter. I have a pretty good build for my size, but I lost weight in Wendricksville. It just didn't fit right. It was a chilly night. T-shirts aren't the warmest of clothes in the world, but nobody ever gets cold in a rumble, and besides, jackets interfere with your swinging ability. Soda and Steve had put more ha uh, hair oil on than was necessary, but we wanted to show them that we were greasers, and tonight we were proud of it. Greasers may not have much, but they have their rep. That and long hair. What kind of world is it where I have to be, all I have to be proud of is my reputation for being a hood and greasy hair? I don't want to be a hood, but even if I don't steal things and mug people and get boozed up, I'm marked lousy. Why should I be proud of it? So Pony is recognizing in this moment that he's defined as being a greaser and as a hood, like someone that does bad things in the community, uh, steals and, and does bad things and is violent. And that's not really who Pony is. Um, so he's feeling a little, he's wondering, he's like, why am I proud of this? Like I'm seen as this by everybody around me, but why do I wanna be a part of it, right? Derry never went in for the long hair. His was 
short and clean all the time. I sat in my armchair in the living room waiting for the rest of the outfit to show up. But of course, tonight, the only one coming would be 2-Bit. Johnny and Dallas wouldn't show. Soda and Steve were playing cards and arguing as usual. Soda was keeping up a steady stream of wisecracks and clowning, and Steve turned up the radio so loud it almost broke my eardrums. Of course, everyone listens to it loud like that, but it just isn't the best thing for a headache. You like fights, don't you, Soda? I asked suddenly. Yeah, sure, he shrugged. I like fights. How come? I don't know. He nodded at me, puzzled. It's action. It's contest. Like a drag race or a dance or something. Shoo, said Steve. I want to beat those socious heads in. When I get in a fight, I want to stomp on the other guy good. I like it, too. How come you like to fight, Derry? I asked, looking up at him as he stood behind me, leaning in the kitchen doorway. He gave me some... He gave me one of those looks that hide when he's th what he's thinking. But Soda piped up. He likes to show off his muscles. I'm gonna show him off on you, little buddy. You get any mouthier. I digested what Soda had said. It was the truth. Derry liked anything that looked like strength, like weightlifting or playing football and roofing houses. Even if he was proud of being smart too, Derry never said anything about it, but he liked fights. I felt out of things. I'll fight anyone anytime, but I don't like to. I don't know if you ought to be in this rumble pony, Derry said slowly. Oh no, I thought with mortal fear. I got a right to be in it. Right then, the most important thing in my life was helping whip the socials. Don't let him make me stay home now. I gotta be in it. How come? I've always come through before, ain't I? Yeah, Derry said with a proud grin. You fight real good for a kid your size, but you were in shape before. You've lost weight and you don't look great, kid. You're tensed up too much. Shoot, said Soda, trying to get the ace out of his shoe without Steve seeing him. We all get tensed up before a rumble. Let him fight tonight. Skin never hurt anyone. No weapons, no danger. I'll be okay, I pleaded him. I'll get a hold of a little one. Well, Johnny won't be there this time. Johnny and I sometimes ganged up on one big guy, but then Curly Shepherd won't be there either and da or Dally, and we'll need every man that we can get. What happened to Shepherd? I asked, remembering Tim Shepherd's kid brother Curly, who was tough, cool, hard as nails, Tim in a miniature size. Uh, we had once played chicken by holding our cigarette ends to each other's fingers. Sounds like a dumb idea. Uh, we stood there clenching our teeth and grimacing with sweat pouring down our faces and the smell of burning flesh making us sick, each refusing to holler until Tim happened to stroll by when he saw that we were burning holes in each other uh, and cracked our heads together, swearing to kill us both if we ever pulled a stunt like that again. I still have the scar on my forefinger. Curly was an average downtown hood, tough but not real bright, but I liked him. He could take anything. All right, let's just check our pages. So we're on 115 and yeah we got two more pages left okay um guys the first question how does the author capture the importance of fitting into a group so there's two things you can note here for number one so uh obviously they talk about their physical appearance he, it's important to fit into the group because they're gonna look nice they're gonna grease their hair up um they want to like show off for the socials that's like a group mentality they want to look a certain way um the other part about a group is that they all like to fight or they all get something out of fighting okay so that shows um their group mindset they're all into it and pony boys are realizing that it's not really for him okay um and then the the last one right it just says explain why the author is including chance so we'll see if we get to that um when they leave to go to the fight they're gonna say some pretty goofy stuff all right so we're on 115 last two pages uh he's in the cooler steve said kicking the ace out of soda show he's in the reformatory again i thought and i said let me fight Derry. if it was blades or chains or something it'd be different nobody ever gets hurt in a skin rumble well Derry gave in i guess he can but be careful if you get in a jam holler and i'll get you out I'll be okay, I said wearily. How come you never worry about Soda Pop as much? I don't see you lecturing him. Man, Derry grinned, put his arm across Soda's shoulders. This is one kid, brother, I don't have to worry about. Soda punched him in the ribs affectionately. This kiddo can use his head. Soda Pop looked down at me with mock superiority and Derry went on. 
You can see he uses it for one thing, to grow hair on. He ducked Soda Swing and he ran off for the door. Two-Bit stuck his head in the door just as Derry went flying out of it, leaping as he went off the steps. Derry turned in a somersault mid-air, hit the ground, and bounced up before Soda could catch him. Well, Two-Bit said, cheerfully cocking an eyebrow, I see we are in prime condition for a rumble. Is everybody happy? Yeah, screamed Soda as he did a flying somersault off the steps. He flipped up and he walked on his hands and did a no-hands cartwheel across the yard to beat Derry's performance. Last page. The excitement was catching. Screeching like an Indian, Steve, Steve went, I said Stevie, Steve went across the lawn in flying leaps and so stopped suddenly and flipped backwards. We could all do acrobatics because Derry had taken a course at the Y and spent the whole summer teaching us everything that he learned on the grounds. It might come in handy in a fight and it did. But it also got two bit and soda jailed once. They were doing midair flips on a downtown sidewalk, walking on their hands and otherwise disturbing the public and the police. Leave it to those two to pull something like that. With a happy whoop, I did a no hands cartwheel off the porch steps, hit the ground, rolled on my feet, and two bit followed me in a similar manner. I am a greaser, soda pop chanted. I am a JD and a hood. JD is juvenile delinquent like earlier. I black in the name of our fair city. I beat up people. I rob gas stations. I am a menace to society. Man, do I have fun. Greaser, 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 Steve sing song. Oh, victim of environment, underprivileged, rotten, no count hood. Juvenile delinquent, you're no good, Derry shouted. Get thee hence, white trash, Tubit said in a snobbish voice. I am a soch. I am privileged and well-dressed. I throw beer blasts. I drive fancy cars and break windows at fancy parties. And what do you do for fun? I inquired in an awed voice. I jump greasers, Two-Bit screamed and did a cartwheel. We settled down as we walked to the lot. Two-Bit was only wearing a jacket. He had a couple of cans of beer stuffed in it. He always gets high before a rumble. Before anything else too, come to think of it, I shook my head. I hate to see the day when I had the nerve to, when I had to get my nerve from a can. I tried drinking once before. The stuff tasted awful. I got sick and a headache. And when Derry found out, he grounded me for two weeks. But that was the last time that I'd ever drink. I'd seen too much of what drinking did for you at Johnny's house. All right, y'all. We left off now on page one seventeen. That's where we'll pick up on Tuesday. So then, the last question you have to answer today is just. Um, what is the purpose of the chanting, right? And why does the author include it? The author includes the chants to show what the world sees of these young men, right? They think they're no good, that they're a menace to society. You can cite any of those examples, right? Um, and it also says in the text that the chants are used to just get them energized, get them ready for this fight. All right, when we pick up on Tuesday, we're gonna read the fight. It's a great scene um, and also, I hate to spoil anything, but if you are staying with me in this reading this week, we're gonna lose not one, but two characters. So hang on to your seats. It is a roller coaster. The movie is great too if you get a chance to rent it. Um, and I will talk to you all this week. Good luck.